Hi, this is Lonya with another StarCraft 2 commentary, and this time it's the game that I've already done. It's Boo against St. Otis Stimpak, only this time it's going to be done in first person view. So we've got Boo's first person point of view, and at the moment he's just producing some drones, just spamming a bit to get his APM up. And we can see both players just doing the same standard opening. So by doing this, hopefully it'll kind of show what he's doing kind of through the game, show all the little bits of micro that you need to do and you can see he's just sending his overlord here and basically just trying to scout out where his opponent might be normally you send the overlord there as your first move that tells you whether you're close by air or whether it's in one of the other two positions on the map so kind of close on the ground or completely across the opposite side of the map and he won't know, well he'll know that say no the Stimpak's not in that close to air position so he'll know that he's in one of the other two positions and he might consider sending out an early scout but we'll have to see what he does and he's just had his second overlord pop, so he's just producing some drones and he's sending that second overlord just across the map on the close map positions. And in theory, that's what the other player would do as well. So the overlords will meet somewhere in the middle and they'll know where each other is. And he's just sending a drone now to get the gas on 13 supply. So he's probably going to go gas before Paul and get some early speedlings. Which is fairly standard in a Zerg versus Zerg match. It's a fairly safe build. I mean, it can be a little bit risky if the opponent decides to put down a really early pull and try and put on some really early pressure, say 6 or 7 pull, put on some pressure with a few links, but he should be able to hold that off if that is the case just with the Zerglings, I mean sorry, just with the drones against the Zerglings and obviously it really hurts you economically so going for a fairly standard 13 gas, 13 or 14 pull just puts you in a decent economic position and allows you to get some units out reasonably early at the moment, players just talking to each other about muters and Boo just complaining about how he normally plays Zerg versus Zerg and fails. So, he's just sending now both overlords across the map because he's scouted that he isn't close by air, so he's got both of them heading towards the other two positions in the 9 and the 6. And the spawning pool's not up yet. He has a couple of drones behind at the moment compared to Sano to Stimpak. But that's not going to be, well, that is kind of quite significant because at this point of the game, when you're quite low on everything, two drones out of 16 or 14 is quite a lot but he is getting his gas up and he is beginning to research speed so he'll have to speed out fairly quickly and he's getting six Zerglings at the moment now I'm trying not to pull well I've already done this in a normal view so if you haven't watched that that gives you both perspective but we can see how he's just sending his um, Zerglings out and if we just check the income tab incomes fairly similar to both of them slightly more gas for say no to Stimpak but at the moment he's just sending his Zerglings across just to scout out the positions and now he's seen that the overlord's there and he knows that that's where the base is so he checks the close positions first because it's the safest way to do it and now he's going to hang around, put a bit of pressure down, just controlling the Zerglings running away because he sees that there's an equal number of Zerglings from St. Lodge to back and the Queen there just injecting his lava to make sure he's got enough injecting his hatchery to make sure he's got enough lava to produce more Zerglings and more drones and getting down his own bending nest just in his base so he sees that these Zerglings are here and he's just going to run away and try and save as many as he can without taking too much damage and he's seen that there's a baneling nest in the base of Sano to Stimpak so he kind of knows that he's going to be expecting Zergling baneling and just kind of moving those Zerglings around got his overlord in there just running out away from the queen because if you lose that first overlord or lose one of the overlords in the base to the queen then he can get supply blocked and he just has lost the overlord so he's supply blocked now and he's just got to make some overlords because he's not going to be able to make any more units and he's just morphing some banelings kind of in a forward position so he's going to try and put on some pressure and you can see he's spending most of his time just kind of on his unit and not spending too much time on his base apart from right now so he's just got those middle, I mean uh, sorry those zerglings and he's got his zerglings on one control group and the banelings in another and he's just sending a few links at a time just controlling them to try and take down those banelings without losing too many units and he's sending the banelings managing to take down most of the banelings but he's only got one baneling left now and no zerglings and he doesn't know exactly what's coming from say no just impact and just see the one zergling on the map which is now attacking his banelings and he's got these banelings, I mean these zerglings having a little fight over here so he's kind of slightly in the dark in terms of what say no just impact might be producing but now he sees a lot more links coming out so he's kind of producing links of his own making sure he's got a lot more coming so he's got 8 more Zerglings on the way against 14 for St. Edith's Stimpak, but obviously he doesn't know that. And he's just morphing some more Banelings because he just knows that he's got to go kind of mainly Banelings Zergling. And he knows from the fact that there's so many Zerglings coming out from St. Edith's Stimpak that it's not going to be too much of a problem in terms of the economy because neither player is going to be able to build too many more drones. And he's still got those Zergling, I mean, sorry, those drones on gas just so he can keep producing the Banelings. And now poor control there. He's kind of sending all his Zerglings against those Banelings and when they explode they just take out lots and lots of the Zerglings. Pretty decent controller on the Banelings. 
He's kind of running them around, trying to send single Zerglings in against Banelings just to lose the fewest amount possible. Because obviously, the less Zerglings you lose against a Banelings, the better. And now we're just sending a couple of drones out, getting a spine crawler just to give some forward defence, and rallying his Zerglings to the front door of St. Edith's Impact because he's reasonably confident that there aren't any Zerglings on that top kind of high ridge between the two bases. Because he had a Baneling up there kind of pretty much scouting it out, and now he's just microwing his Zerglings around, sending one Zergling here, one Zergling there, just to try and take out these Banelings with minimal losses to his own Zergling. Just kind of chasing him down with one Zergling. Takes out three for the loss of three Zerglings. So doing really well at controlling that and takes out another one with only losing one and just not really microwing his Zerglings over here because he knows that he's reasonably confident that he should be able to at least draw even on that battle, which he does manage to do. And now getting another gas down and just starting to morph his layer. So he's taking up, and he hasn't really had a check inside St. Edith's Impact's base very recently, but he knows, or he can be fairly confident from the fact that there's been lots of drones and lots of, I mean, lots of Zerglings and lots of Banelings morphing, that there's not too much going on. And that was a nice one, just sending in one Baneling and Magic to and a lot of Zerglings. More about this kind of luck than anything. Poor control from St. Edith's Impact, and you can see Boo sticking down another spine crawler on his front door, just to protect against any attack, because he did see that there were quite a few Zerglings morphed at the front door, and even though he took down quite a few of them, he'll know that St. Edith's Impact's going to want to put on some pressure. And we'll see when this layer goes up, that he'll probably want to get a Mutalisk down out, so that he can pump some Mutalisks, which will obviously do very well against the Banelings and the Zerglings, and he's just got his overlords positioned nicely on the front door, so you can see when the Zerglings come out from St. Edith's Impact's base, and just kind of make sure his in units are in the right position. He's got another overlord just right here, so we can see all these Banelings, just sending in single Zerglings here and there, just to try and get this Banelings to uh, burst without doing too much damage to any other units when they get too close to all the clump zerglings. And now he's sending out another drone and he's just sitting, setting up a spire with that drone. And he's not good control left from the zerglings, losing quite a few to that baneling, more than he really would have wanted. Now he's getting that spire up. But that front door block with those two spine crawlers doing pretty well at holding off these banelings and these zerglings. Just sending in these zerglings now, trying to take down as many banelings as he can before they pop and before they try and run up his base. But he's Got to be wary of all those Zerglings that are also there for St. Edith's Impact, and the Banelings have now popped, so he's now got Zerglings just f forming up on the f top of his ramp so that he can kind of hopefully hold off against his Banelings. And what he could really do with doing is having an overall kind of positioned above his expansion, taking out, sending out a single Zergling again, and another couple of Zerglings just to try and take down these Banelings as much as he can. And he could really do with having an overall out here so he can spot these, because he knows that they're kind of forming up there, but he hasn't got anything out there to spot because they're kind of his overlords are all more aggressively positioned near the base of Tender's Timback. And now these Zerglings running up, just going to have to try and pull his queen off, do as much defense as he can, try and keep these spine claws alive, bring another one down, but he's got his Banelings mocking this. These Banelings come from time, should be able to take down the Zerglings, losing a couple of drones, not being very clever with pulling his drones out. Unless some Zerglings do pop, so he's going to be alright now. Managed to hold that off, just lost the one spine crawler and a few drones to those Banelings, but it's not too bad in terms of the economy. And he's still pretty much in the dark in terms of what's going on in St. Edith's Stimpak's base, so he doesn't really know if St. Edith's Stimpak's teched up or anything. He doesn't really know, all he knows is that he hasn't expanded down to his natural, so he's kind of just sending out some Zerglings now. Not very good control, just kind of moving them up in a big group, and he really didn't know what was off the top of that ramp, so when all those bendings were that they were just able to really easily take out all those Zerglings, just kind of in one group, and he didn't control them as well as he has been doing at other times. But he sees these new bendings coming sending out one of his own which should be able to take down a few Zerglings, maybe some Banelings if he manages to crash into them and he's just had some Mutalisks pop so those Mutalisks should be able to take down basically all the Zerglings, all the Banelings but not using them at the moment, just kind of keeping them back in his base not trying to show his hand too soon but now he has and basically he still doesn't know if there's any kind of similar tech coming but he's going to expect from the fact that there's a lot of Banelings there, wow a lot of Banelings coming in, taking down that spine crawler, and now he's got more Zerglings following up. He can kind of have a bit of confidence that he's managed to get to Muda, but St. Edith's Timback's probably not going to be particularly close, because he has been spending a lot more on the Zerglings and a lot more on the Banelings, although he's basically Boo's been in the dark almost his entire time, but he does have quite a lot of Muda now, so now he's just going to go in for an attack. And what he could be doing is taking out these Overlords, but instead he's going go straight for the main base, because one, that way he can find out what's going on there, and he sees two hatcheries still. Neither have been upgraded to the lair. He knows he's not going to be in too much trouble now. And he can just keep producing a few Mutalists and pulling out some Mutalists there when they get damaged from that Queen just to keep him alive, which is good play. And now just taking down the Queens, focusing on the Queens because they're the only things that can attack here. And he's just got one Mutalist at the back of his base. And a GG comes from saying they're just in back because he really didn't take up. And just by getting those Mutalists, Boo was able to win. Just sticking on the one hatchery against the two of saying they're just in back. Fairly easy victory in the end.
just because he managed to take up. But you can see he was in the dark most of the time about exactly what Say No Just Impact was kind of doing. But with that good Zergling control and Bailing control, he managed to basically win all the Zergling and Bailing battles and gave himself the opportunity to take up while Say No Just Impact just kind of stuck with the Zergling Bailing and kind of went all in on that and didn't manage to be particularly effective and lost out in the long run in terms of a tech race. So well played there and you can see you've just got to kind of make sure that you control all your Zerglings and all your Banelings incredibly well. Just send out one at a time, two at a time maybe, just to take down the opponent's Zerglings and Banelings and keeping all these overlords here just to see exactly what the opponent's doing. And Seno just impact similarly, he's got overlords just up on the his natural, on Boo's natural, just down here. So you just got to keep a good eye on everything that's going on. And even if you can't necessarily see in the opponent's base, you can kind of tell from what they're producing and what's coming at you just exactly what they're kind of doing. So he didn't know that there was these two hatcheries up, he didn't know that he wasn't taking up, but he could still kind of hold off all the zergling and bailing pressure and manage to take up himself and get those middle lists out. And that's what won him the game. So well played there from Boo and pretty good control most of the time on his zerglings and bailings, although it wasn't completely perfect. But well played.